All right, so another PC build, done and done. Um, I really like this build. The 2070 Super is awesome. What a great card. Um, this build uh, has the RGB lighting. It's it, Overall, this is about uh, parts cost, I think, about 1100 after tax. Uh, so I'm going to go through the parts uh, throughout the video, but we have a six, we have an 800 watt power supply, Ryzen 5 3600X, RGB lighting, B550M Pro VDH motherboard for $110. Uh, the graphics card was $500. Uh, the 2070 Super, uh, it's a Zotac Gaming Mini. And then you have the WD um, M.2. So I like to make these videos. They are raw. They're not the best uh, camera angles, of course, but I think it's going to help anybody that wants to learn how to build a PC to learn. I think it's going to really uh, uh, assist you. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. But here is this build going forward. So in this build video, I'm actually going to start a little bit after I've done some work on it already because uh, it's kind of straightforward, but uh, your build is still on the way, which is why I'm uh, slowly doing this bit by bit. But what I've already done is I've already installed your power supply, 600 watt power supply, and the way I've installed it is um, actually I have the fan on the underside. You can't really see it because the dust filter is on there, but down at the bottom is where the fan intake is coming in from, and that's because when the power supply is trying to stay cool, you want the intake of air coming from a cooler place, and that's usually not where all the heat is coming from where this is where the computer is going to be. So I have your power supply on there and it's actually really easy to install. If you see on the back, these, well in this case specifically, these cases pop off. There's a bracket on the inside that you attach your power supply to and then you reapply this to the side. Very straightforward. But I have it facing down and of course I pushed all the cables to the back so that they're ready for me when I put the motherboard on. Now the second thing I've done is I put the fans on there. The fans are actually really easy to install. Um, these are the RGB fans. We also have RGB strip lighting we're going to put in here. But these fans here are designed to be your intake fans. They're going to be pulling in air from the outside of the case here. And they're going to suck air in and keep everything on the inside cool. So you have these two fans here bringing the air in. Of course, you're going to have your, your fan on your um, actual uh, motherboard that's, that's, pet, that's uh, fanning your uh, CPU and one for your GPU. But here you have an exhaust fan that's going to be taking all the hot air out. And at the very top, you have one last fan right up there that's going to be taking the air out as well. So just keep that in mind. That's how your fans are going to work. Now let me spin this around here to show you the back so far. It looks like a mess, I know, but that's okay. So all these, um, what we're going to be doing eventually is we're going to take these front panel connectors. This is going to connect basically your uh, USB on the front panel, your, your uh, power on your front panel, uh, even your um, reset switch. Everything like that's going to be right in here. And that's what that's what's going to connect to the motherboard. The audio from the front panel is going to be connected to the motherboard with this when we get the motherboard on there. And of course, all these are going to be your powering cables for your motherboard and then for your future expansion. Uh, it's kind of hard for me to go through all of them, but um, if you ever install more um, uh, hard drives, more SATA-based hard drives, and things like that that have that need a SATA power connector, you can see this power supply has tons of SATA power connectors, even old ones. So. Just keep that in mind, but we are good to go. Now, let me explain the case real quick for you. Uh, the case is designed, it is a smaller case. It's only designed for micro ATX boards or mini ITX boards, and yours is a micro ATX board, so we're good to go. Uh, it is designed by Cooler Master, and the reason I have all these fans on here is because we want to make sure that the interior of it is as cool as possible. More fans than merrier, but you're going to notice as we go through the build, these little holes here and these, uh, these little tie-down ports are there to help us do some good cable management. So... Uh, you're going to see the end product later down the road, but that is the intro to this uh, start in the build process. And as we wait for your more parts, we'll get it in there. But I'll go ahead and put the motherboard on now as well so that we're ready to go when the uh, computer chip gets here so we can put that on. Let me very really quickly explain how I'm going to mount the motherboard. So what you can see, you have, you have all these uh, standoffs that are um, at least the standoff holes and stuff location where we need to stand the mother motherboard off. The motherboard's actually going to rest on top of this. And it's going to be a little bit raised from the from the chassis, from the back of the, the case. And that's because you need to have a little bit more room for cable management and for heat, things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to look down here at the bottom where it says Micro ATX, Mini ITX. It's telling you where you need to put your standoffs for your board. So we're going to go ahead and do that uh, for the M and I. Anything with an M on it, we're going to put a standoff on. And it's going to be pretty obvious. So I'm going to put those standoffs on here. And um, we're going to put the motherboard on. Now what I've already done over here on the back side is I've already put in the IO shield. This comes with the motherboard case. You just literally squish it in here and plug it in. 
and it, it snaps right in. This is basically the shield, the input-output shield for your motherboard where your USB ports are going to be, your um, audio jack, things like that. Uh, last thing here is we know that eventually we're going to have a, uh, a graphics card in here, and these slots over here on the side represent the expansion slots. You can actually have quite a bit of slots with the micro ATX board. We're going to go ahead and pop open the uh, first two because what you'll notice is that your motherboard's actually going to uh, fit right in here where you're going to have your HDMI ports, your display ports, and things like that from your graphics card. It's going to be right in here. So we're going to take these two out right now so that we can basically be ready for that when the graphics card gets installed. All right, so we're going to start on the motherboard now. We're about to get it installed. And just so you know, when we get the computer chip, we're actually going to put it right here. This is the brain of the motherboard. We're going to pop that open, put the chip in there, close it, and that's going to put the brain on the motherboard. And of course, we're then going to put the uh, case on these screws here, right here. Now, um, I have RAM, obviously. I'm going to plug the RAM into these sockets. You can see if I zoom in here, it says DMMA2, DMMB2 is your first slot. Now, generally thinking, it's... Uh, the way you put the RAM in is uh, always, if it's dual memory channel, which a lot of times it is for your computer chips, you always go the furthest RAM slot away, skip one, the next one. But it, the motherboard will tell you how to put it in there. And then of course, if you add RAM, you can kind of put in whatever one you want. But that's all I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go ahead and put my RAM in now. And it just snaps on in, you can hear a click. Just like that. So I'm gonna put the other RAM stick in here and we're gonna have a RAM ready to go. Now what I've already done, you can kind of see it right here, the blue beneath that. Uh, this is a heatsink for the M.2 storage, 500 gigabyte storage we put on here. We pop this off, put that on, screw it back down. That's actually your, your storage. It's 500 gigabytes of storage. That's the fastest amount of storage you can get. And th that's what we have on right there. And that's what we're gonna put the operating system on. And that's what you can put all your, your main games on. And if you need to expand, well, you have another M.2 storage right here. You can put one on. Um, and also, obviously, you have these SATA ports on the side here, right here, that you can plug into your for your hard drives and things like that. But other than that, that's the motherboard. Um, up here, what you see is the, the sink. The, it's a heat sink. It's your voltage control for your motherboard to make sure that your the power is coming appropriately to the motherboard and that it's not overheating. And this little heat sink is actually the chip itself that controls the motherboard. So, um, obviously, this part of the motherboard is where we're going to put the... Graphics card is the Time 16 slot, Generation 4 Time 16 PCIe slot. That's awesome. That's like the fastest you can get right now. And the Biba 50 motherboard supports that. And you have a little bit of room here because MSI was smart. They know that the graphics cards usually take up two slots so that you have room down here to add anything additional. Maybe you want to add more USB ports or you want to add a sound card or something like that. You can actually use these or storage device even. You can use those which don't require nearly this much space to put something on there. So that's the motherboard. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the RAM finished installed and unconventionally, I'm gonna go ahead and put this into the case, uh, even though we don't have the CPU or the cooler on because uh, the cooler is actually a pretty small stock cooler. It's gonna do its job. The Ryzen stock coolers always do their job um, pretty darn well. If we had a bigger cooler, maybe I'd put the cooler on first and then put it into the case. But for what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and put it in like this. And then once the cooler and the computer chip come on, we'll just put it on while it's in the case and ready to go. So what you can see is that I've got uh, the motherboard now mounted to the case and I've got all the cables that I need connected to it so far before we've kind of, we're still waiting on the graphics card. But uh, this is a front panel case, the audio uh, for the front panel um, audio jack, which is this guy right here. Uh, then you have the power switches right here and uh, these are actually easy to know how to put in because if you, let me zoom in really close. The motherboard usually shows you something like that JFP1, the power information, you just kind of follow those those guides and that's all you need to do. You just put them in as, they, as it's asked. Uh, this is your USB connector for the front panel. Got that installed. And of course you have your 24 pin connected from the power supply and your eight pin connected from your power supply right up there. So now all I gotta do is uh, get the computer chip put on there and the power and the, uh, and the fan. And then of course, once your graphic card get here, we're gonna put that right in there and uh, turn the computer on and get it working. We're, we're really making progress. Okay, it is now time to get your chip into the uh, socket. And, and long story short, if you look at the bottom left-hand corner of the socket, let me see if I can get a, I'll use my scissors. So right um, here on the bottom left-hand corner, there's a triangle, let me see if I can zoom in there. That little tiny triangle you can barely see corresponds with the gold triangle that you can see right there on the bottom left-hand corner of the Ryzen chip. So I'm gonna simply, Take it out of the case, of course, pop it into that socket, and it'll sink in there. And let me open this up. 
when it's in there, I'll lock it by just pushing that arm down and that's gonna give it the brain. Now, lastly, I'm gonna put the, the cooler on there. The cooler is just gonna go on top and uh, I have something I gotta tell you about the cooler as well. One moment. Okay, you can see on the back of the cooler, it's actually glistening really well now, uh, is thermal padding. That thermal padding actually goes right on top of the computer chip as um, a way to you know connect the, the cooler, the Wraith cooler to the chip so that the heat sink, this little metal part, is actually pulling up heat from the chip and then being spun and cooled by the cooler on top. So this guy is gonna go right on top of the cooler inside those screw holes, and we should have a brain on this computer. All right, as you can see, that's now firmly on there. That's just gonna be your spinning fan. Now I put the AMD side on this side because if it was on the other side, uh, it might block one of your RAM slots. So anyway, AMD is on that side where it's not gonna be blocking anything. I put your fans back in. I took them out temporarily just to give me more space to work and I just quickly plugged them back in. And now it's time to move on to the thing you got this for, the 2070 Super. I'm really excited to get this in there for you. Um, but yeah, we're gonna move on to that right now. Okay, as talked about before, we have our PCIe slots open over here and we're gonna be putting this right here. So I went ahead and clicked this guy open, all right, close to open. So it's ready to snap in. And let's talk about the card real quick. This thing looks good. It's got a nice top plate that makes your, you know, so it's got a little bit of a plate there to protect it. You don't see the gnarly tops of a graphics card, so it doesn't look too ugly at all. Like th this, this is a beautiful looking card and it's thick too, which tells me it's probably got good cooling. Now, um, it's gonna be taking a lot of power. You can see it takes an eight pin and a six pin to power it. We have that on our power supply. It's sitting right there waiting for us. And um, just look at the dual fan. It's just a really nice design. Um, now on the side, you have your, uh, let's see, is that two display ports? Let's zoom out here. Three display ports, one HDMI. That's great. All right, so we're gonna get this guy plugged in and all I'm gonna do is simply pop it into that socket and make sure that the outside of it is poking outside the case and we have this installed, that's how easy it is. The hard part is when you gotta make sure all the drivers are installed on the computer, which we'll do later. And there you have it, it is reinforced. It's in there nice and snug. On the left side here, I had this popped off and I put the card in, pop this back on, and now it's reinforced by these, these two screws as well. So your rig is looking very good. Now we just gotta plug this guy in. I'm gonna put the uh, these two power connectors right into it so it's all nice and plugged in. Plug it into a, uh, we're gonna plug this into the uh, pow power on my wall and then we're gonna go ahead and put it up, boot it up on the computer. It's gonna be really fun. All right, so we're all hooked up. I have my power supply on back here. It's turned on. Everything seems to be plugged in. And let's do the moment of truth. Uh, let me go ahead and see if this cable will reach. Let me use my display port cable here. It should reach. Let's plug this guy in. Let me go around the back so we can put this guy right there. There we are. Okay, should we see if it posts for the first time? Everything's turned on, it should work. All right, power on. It is working, okay. So one thing I need to do is still plug in the uh, RGB fans, but everything is turning on. And let's wait for our uh, computer over here to turn on as well, but uh, I'll plug these fans in in a moment once I do some cable management. How about the top fan, the top fan spinning? That's telling me that my motherboard fans, which are connected here and here, are all connected and working. And I'm still waiting, let me turn my flash off, for this guy to turn on. Let's just give it a second here. Uh, wait for the screen to show up. Let me just put a pause on. Okay, that's a great sight to see. So this popped up, you have your Ryzen 5 3600. Uh, you have your RAM frequency up there and everything like that. Now, the default is 2,666 of RAM. Um, so if you put your own RAM in there and it's lower than that, it should default down to that. Uh, whatever the, your new megahertz is, just keep that in mind. Uh, faster is always better. So remember, if you ever need to replace the RAM, it's very easy to do. You saw me do it. Uh, nothing's connected. Uh, we got a hub connected. Okay, so we're gonna press F1 as it says right there to run setup. So I'm gonna just press F1. Let me put the uh, keyboard into it actually. Over here, I'm gonna put the keyboard in. And let me press F1, here we go. Delete key to enter setup, here we go. There we go, now we're in the uh, BIOS. So let's talk about the BIOS for a second. So up here in the, oh no, I gotta get my mouse in here. One moment. Okie dokie, so up here you're gonna see your computer speed, 3.6 gigahertz. Now if you overclock, obviously you can speed that up faster. Um, I don't recommend you do that until you get a little bit better of a cooler right there. Fix that cooler up a little bit, make it more stocky and maybe you can feel a little more comfortable at overclocking. You could try it, but just keep that in mind. 
your current DDR speed. Now, the RAM I'm using, let me just show you what this is. So if I go down to memory, the RAM I have is actually 3,200, sorry, 3,000 megahertz. It's a 3,000 megahertz memory, as you can see right here. So what I can do is I can come and tell the tool, uh, tell the tool, tell the uh, BIOS to go to XMP profile one, which you can see over here is 3,000 megahertz. So if I click on this, I'm now gonna be running 3,000 megahertz. Let me go ahead and escape and restart, and you'll see what I mean. So now you can see over here the DDR speed is 3,000 megahertz. So now, you know, you can really run very fast RAM in this if you get it. You just have to go ahead and go to your memory and remember this video of how to set your XMP profile. So now I know I'm good. It's recognizing my RAM slot. So if I uh, go to my computer storage, um, it's showing me that I don't have any SATA hard drives present. If I did, it'd be here. But I do have something that WD M.2 is present. So that's 500 gigabytes, which is what I want to see. Uh, what else can be on here? Let me go over to computer. Um, up here at the top, we're seeing that we have 16 gigabytes of RAM. So everything's popping up in there just as we'd expect. And so we know that we're good and we're ready to install Windows. There's really not much more you need to do on the BIOS. So what I have here is I have my Windows installer. There's an installer you can um, download from the internet and you just put on a USB and this is really what boots it up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna power it off, plug this into a USB port and it should automatically boot from it. If it doesn't, you can see up here is my boot priority. I can move the USB over to be priority if I need to, but usually you don't need to do that. So let me go ahead and put this in and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the USB stick is in one of the USB ports on the front. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just escape out of this. And let's see what happens when it reboots up. Let's see if it gets into um, the uh, BIOS. Uh, sorry, it gets into the uh, booter for Windows. All right, so it's thinking a little bit differently now and we should be waiting for that Windows logo to pop up. Let's wait and see. And there she appeared. So I'm gonna go ahead and install Windows now and I'll kind of show you the basics of it. So it pops up, yep, English, US, this is actually part, this part's pretty self-explanatory. We're gonna install it. And let, let me wait for this to set up. I'm gonna have to pause the video. It might take a little bit of time for this to complete because you don't have a product key. You can buy one if you want to, you don't need one. Uh, we're going to do Windows 10 Home. Some people do Windows 10 Pro. It's more expensive if you do buy a product key, but most people are just fine with Windows, with Windows 10 Home. So Windows 10 Home. You accept these license terms. And we're going to do a custom install because uh, we're starting from scratch. Custom install. There's our drive. I'm going to say next. And that's what it's, it's going to be putting onto that W2 drive that you saw on there, which is 500 gigabytes. And now it's gonna take some time. We're gonna go ahead and let it do its thing and install everything. Okay, so just completed that part of the install. Now we're just waiting for it to uh, keep loading in. And we'll just do this bit by bit, but we should load into Windows here pretty quick and start downloading all the drivers. I have not connected to Windows to internet yet. I'm gonna connect the internet when I'm ready to download the drivers. We're gonna keep it simple for now. Okay, so I'm still installing Windows, but as Windows is installing, I went ahead and got your RGB fans working. So these ones are blowing in cold air. I'm gonna go ahead and increase their fan speed all the way up. That is great, that is sounding really good. Now, the controller controls them, so you go ahead and do whatever you want, but I'm gonna go ahead and put these on. Let's see, what goes, what's a good color for now? I don't know. But you can see down here, you got these RGB lights going around the side. You can move those wherever you want. Those are just magnetic strips, and they all connect to this back hub back here. That's where they all connect. So you can go ahead and use the controller to keep them all the way up to 1500 RPM, which is what I usually keep them at, because you can barely hear them. Might as well keep them the fastest. I mean, that sounds awesome. And then use this to basically just change the colors. If you want to change the speed of the color change, anyway, that's what, that's, so that's what you can play around with this. We'll keep all of you with the manual. That looks good. Man, your, your rig is looking really, really good right now. That is awesome. All right, onto Windows. So we're selling Windows. We're gonna go to United States. Uh, yep, US keyboard layout. Oops, I don't need to add another language. Nope. Okay, so we're not gonna connect to the internet. We're gonna say I don't have internet, but you see we do have Wi-Fi availability, but we're not gonna do that quite yet. All right, so we're gonna continue with limited setup, as you can see down here in the left corner. We don't wanna do anything crazy yet. We'll do all the Windows updates at the end. Let me give this a name of new user. I don't know if you can see that. New user, come on, zoom in. New user, that's what I did. New user, we'll say next. 
and I'm not going to type a password in. We're going to load in right away. So on this screen, I'm actually going to turn all this off. You don't need any of this. Um, when you make your own account on here, uh, like your own personal account, you can choose if you want these. But every uh, person I hear talk about installing Windows, they say to keep that off for performance and for privacy, things like that. I'm not going to sync any devices. And I'm going to not now, no Cortana, I'm not going to have you help me. So now it's just saying welcome to Windows. So this is what we're going to do next. We're going to basically be led to the Git desktop, start installing drivers. Okay, we are in Windows now. Now, we're not connected to the internet yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my LAN, plug this on in. Oh, one second. There we go. It's in there. And now it's going to connect to the internet down here. And we're going to go ahead and let me zoom out. We're going to go ahead and start going to the Windows update. So I'm going to just type that in here. Uh, Windows updates here we go and i'm going to just start running them i'm on the internet so we're going to just check for updates now while that's going it's going to pop up with a ton just just wait and see yeah see all that so we're going to let that run now on this flash drive i've already went on the internet on my other computer and i downloaded all the drivers that you need i'll show you how i got there but uh i put them all in this usb so it's an easy install even the bios for the motherboards on here um the only thing i need to do is go on the internet on this computer and download the GeForce Experience so you can get the drivers on for the for the graphics card. So I'll do that after I get all these Windows updates done first. So that's the next process. Okay, this is really nice. So while the Windows updates were going, the NVIDIA control panel already popped up here. So we're gonna definitely agree and continue. And I have not downloaded the GeForce Experience yet. So here's the typical NVIDIA control panel. And we can just, this is a very common, you know, this is something you can use to control how strong, you know, how your graphics card works. And you can see it's recognizing your graphics card and you can use this for, you know, going forward with your graphics. So this is really good for you to have. I like having GeForce Experience running in the background because it helps, allows you to, you know, do game chat capture and things like that as well in the background. So while the downloads for the Windows updates are going on, I'm also going to download GeForce Experience so you can have this on your computer as well. Okay, so now I'm in GeForce Experience. I'm going to go to Drivers. And here's the new driver to go, so that's good. Provides the best gaming experience. Yeah, that's what I want. Okay, so we're gonna we have a new driver to download that was released on the 7th of January. We're gonna download that. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have all the drivers we need for this graphics card. I'm gonna choose Express Installation. We're gonna let it do its thing. All right, so we're gonna let that complete. Now, while that's going on, let me show you how I found the drivers and the BIOS updates. So if you go to the website, the B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi, you find that and you go to the support, oops, let me back up. You go to the support aspect of it. You can go into the BIOS updates and you can download the most recent uh, version of the BIOS, which is what I've already done. I've got this BIOS on my, my flash drive. I'm ready to update your BIOS later. We'll do that in, in a moment. Then you have your drivers, and on drivers, you're going to go Windows 10 64-bit. Um, I'm not going to do any sort of the RAID drivers. That's if you're going to be connecting, like, network and hard drives and stuff specifically. Oh, we're getting flashy screens because we're down to the drivers. Uh, there it is. Uh, you also have your chipset drivers. We have these down. I have these downloaded and ready to install. Um, onboard VGA drivers we're not going to worry about because you're not using an internal graphics card. You're using an external one. And the LAN drivers, so this includes your Wi-Fi and your Ethernet and your Bluetooth driver. So we're gonna do all of that and of course your audio as well. So we're gonna get all those installed. I just downloaded these and we're gonna just plug them off on the USB and run them on the computer once all the Windows updates are done. So that's what I've already done and that's where I found them, just so you know. Okay, so we're now good to restart the computer. We're gonna restart it now because if you look at our notifications, the Windows updates are also waiting for us to restart as well. You know, all these pending restarts. So I'm gonna go ahead and restart the computer. Everything's gonna start over and uh, we're gonna be on our next stage of getting these drivers installed. Okay, so I've completed checking for all my updates. They look good. Now it's time to go ahead and do some drivers. So these are looking good. If there's more updates, they'll install automatically. I'm also gonna install Blizzard uh, because I wanna test Call of Duty on here. So I'll get that installed. All right, so let's go ahead and open up my flash drive that has all of these, um, these on here. So here's the, um, Oh, I need to put them on there still. <laughs> Let me get them on there. Okay, now I have them on there. So first thing we'll do the, uh, let's see, let's just start with the LAN drivers. And I click through them. There's going to be a setup on here. Here it is, setup. I'll run that. 
Very good. Press next and install. Very good. So that is now completed basically. Very good, so LAN is good. And finish. Perfect. All right, on to the next one. So I'll delete that. I have it saved somewhere else, so I know where they are. Deleting that. Oh, I can't do it yet. Okay, I'll do it later. Uh, we'll do the audio. And we'll go to setup. Same thing. Next. And this one should be pretty quick. Maybe it might make a restart, but I'll wait for a second. And I will restart my computer later because I'm downloading something else right now. Okie doke. So now let's see if I can delete this. Uh, land's gone. Okay. Now I will go to Wi Fi. I'll delete audio in a second. Uh, let's see. Installer. I guess wireless setup. Sure. It says setup. Next. I agree. Install. Yes. All right, let's let this run. Installation completed, finish. And no, I'm not gonna restart yet. I'll restart later. Delete that, it's done. Delete the Wi-Fi, because that's done. And now I'll do Bluetooth drivers. Let's go to Windows 10. I guess we'll go to Intel Bluetooth application. Wireless setup, here we go. Yes. And let's get the Bluetooth finished now the drivers for this. These are the most current drivers on the website, right? I accept. Uh, typical, yeah. Install. And finish. So that is now done. So Bluetooth is done. Let me delete that, yes. Now I am downloading Modern Warfare right now, so I'll probably have to pause that download when I restart. Okie doke, now we're going to do chipset. Um, just run the application. Yes. Let this run. Okay, it pulls up this window, and I will install all these chipset drivers. Look at that GeForce thing. It thinks we're in a, in a game. That's cool. Let this run. Okay, now it's time to restart the computer before I do. Nope, I'm not going to delete that yet. I'm going to restart it. So now all the drivers have been installed. The only thing remaining is to finish downloading Modern Warfare because I want to check, check out that game to make sure all the graphics are working and then update your BIOS. So that's what I got to do next. While I am waiting for Modern Warfare to finish downloading, I will go ahead and do an extreme run of Benchmark Valley. I'm going to run a benchmark on this in a second at 1080p. And uh, once this loads in, this is just a really good benchmark to check how good your graphics card's running, really. I'm really curious to see what the results are. So once this loads in, I'm going to run the benchmark up here in the top left corner. And let's see how this runs. Benchmark right here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a benchmark. And let's see. I'll let it finish. But right now you can see down here in the bottom left-hand corner uh, what the current FPS is on extreme HD, Ultra HD settings. And uh, yeah, it's running well so far. So let's let this finish and see the score we get and compare it. All right, there is your score. Uh, 121 uh, FPS on uh, Ryzen 5 3600, score 5096. And let's compare that to somebody that had the same card, but a little bit better of a CPU, like an 8 core, 8, th 8 core 8 thread CPU. They, of course, got a little bit more FPS than you, but uh, yeah, it's it's your card is running running really good. So I'm excited to see what this looks like in Modern Warfare. This on Ultra HD is getting 121. Modern Warfare is probably going to be getting a really good score as well as you play. Really good experience. Okay, well, everything was downloaded and went ahead and also uh, did some cable management. Just kind of cleared the cables up, tightened them down a little bit, and put them over here in the corner. So when I put the uh, case on, on the back, it'll all kind of squeeze in there and be hidden from view. And it's going to make it easier for you to kind of just access them again when you need them to put your hard drive on down here or put your SSD cards over here. Maybe you can move this around. Uh, for now, this is going to be exactly what you need. You have plenty of room to... Um, add on to it. Okay, it's almost time to play Modern Warfare, but first we need to do the BIOS. So I'm going to go ahead and plug my flash drive back in here. Right over there. 
and I'm going to run the uh, BIOS flash. We just restart. Now the way you get to the BIOS after you restart is um, when you turn the computer on, you press the delete key, and that should get it going. So if we turn the computer on again, let's turn it on, and then just pressing delete. And uh, just wait for the screen to pop up with the BIOS. Here we are again in the BIOS. We're going to go down to M flash, ka -ching, and it's going to reboot, and this is the uh, BIOS mode to update the BIOS. So I already put it on my flash drive, and now when the computer turns back on, look how nice that looks, it looks great. When the computer turns back on, we will be ready to get this thing updated. Okay, so what we're gonna see is here's our current BIOS right down here, version 2.0, uh, done on June 4th, 2020. Here we are on my Kingston drive that I have. We're gonna go to the folder where I know the BIOS is. Here it is. And it automatically down here recognizes the BIOS and says, okay, there's the BIOS version 2.41 on this date that it was made. And we're gonna say, yes, that's what we want. So I'm gonna say enter. And it's gonna say, are you sure you wanna select the file? I say, yes. And now everything's uh, disabled. I'm gonna run away from the room and let this complete. So this might take like maybe five, six minutes, but uh, I'm gonna just let it go. And once this is done, I will be BIOS updated, drivers updated. I'll go into the BIOS one more time to make sure that my RAM speeds are still where I want them. And then I'll play some Modern Warfare to make sure it's all working. Alrighty, so we just completed our BIOS update. We are good to go. Now, whenever you complete a BIOS update, you're gonna notice your RAM resets to the speeds. Now remember, I'm using a lot better RAM than that, 33,000 megahertz. I mean, you can go better than that too. Obviously there's 4,000 megahertz RAM, but I'm gonna make sure I save it to XMP profile one. Uh, up here, I'm gonna look at my BIOS version. It is indeed 241, BIOS build date 929-2020, which is what I expect. So now I'll go ahead and X out of this and let's go ahead and play some Modern Warfare. All right, so I'm playing Modern Warfare and uh, you know, on this you know, screen when you're in the air, you always have actually low FPS. This is 120 and it's actually pretty darn good. So. Uh, let's see how this goes throughout the game, and uh, yeah, let's see how it goes. All right, this is in the plane. We're at 127, and once I get into some fire, oh, down to 80, yep, in the plane, normally this is what happens. All right, let's see how we do as we get in the game. This is dropping from the plane. All right, so I lost, just lost my game, but anyway, I was bouncing between 120 to 160 that entire game, so I think this is a dang good card. It was a smooth experience. Yeah, you guys have a good PC.